Normally, I would not record this segment of Prime News, but since it's about spring break, and it's because about recent reports of rape in Daytona Beach, because children are on spring break, and their parents allow them to go to Florida, or to Mexico, or to Aruba. And since um, the recent news about Natalie Holloway, um, and she was on spring break in Aruba and has never returned back to her parents, Brittany Drexel from upstate New York, who um, ended up going to Florida, hasn't returned. I thought I would just do this segment only because I heard that one of the children in Daytona Beach who was raped was 14 years old. So I don't know too much about the story, but I thought this would be a very important segment for parents to watch. Here we go. Welcome. This is Prime News. I'm Mike Alanos. All right. We start the show tonight with a story. It scares me as a parent. We're talking about spring break here. Now, we know kids are, are drinking, but it sounds like it's worse than ever. Police in Daytona Beach, Florida say six rapes were reported during the first week of spring break alone there. The youngest victim allegedly 14 years old. All but one case involved drugs or alcohol. Half of the victims unconscious. Shouldn't this make a stop and rethink spring break? Look at this video posted on YouTube. Booze by the pool, half-naked girls, kids drinking themselves into oblivion until they're passed out. Is that okay? Parents, you okay with this? Taking your calls. You feel good about letting your kid go? one 877 the number. Joining me to talk about this, a man who has covered this firsthand, David DeSalvo, contributor for uh, True Slant. He's in Florida right now. He's been all over this story. David, thanks for being with us. Also back with us, Wendy Walsh, clinical psychologist. You can read always more of her thoughts, momlogic.com. And joining us by phone, Carrie uh, Orpnuck, uh, Daytona Beach Police Department. Uh, Captain, thanks for being with us. Uh, first off, it's, it, it, it frightens me. It's got to make you shudder as well. Six reported rapes in just one week. Yeah, Mike, uh, these, these are obviously disturbing. Um, we don't like to see these things kind of happen. And as law enforcement, we, we feel helpless sometimes because obviously we can't be in places where a lot of these incidents are, are occurring. Uh, the best tool that we have, then we throw it out there to the parents, uh, to the public, and to the kids that are, that are visiting, is, is the educational part, you know, the buddy system. Let's go back to the basics where, you know, you, you just, you need to stay together, you need to think as, as you know, kids, you need to watch your alcohol. Um, it, it's a bad combination. It sure is. And then, yes, there's teaching, and yes, we want, you know, we have to instruct our kids, if they are going to go, to stay together. Right. Uh, but it makes me wonder, or makes me think twice about a parent, do I even want my kid going? If that's what's happening, and that's the kind of teaching, you have to stay together because there are these predators lurking. Uh, Carrie, do you, would you send your child? I don't know if you have any children, but uh, if a friend had a child and they asked you, Carrie, what do you think? What would you tell them? Uh, well, Mike, you know, uh, fortunately for me right now, my son is a little bit too young okay. to uh, to partake in the festivities of spring break. However, obviously that day will come. Um, I, I think as a parent and, and as a as a police officer working in this type of environment, you, you know, you can't you can't be around your kids all the time. At some point, your children are going to be exposed to a lot of different variety of things, whether they come here on spring break or they're at home uh, attending functions. Education again, I think is the key to this. I think as a parent, again, as a and as a police Police officer, you really have to talk to your children. You have to listen to them. You've got to take the time to to explain to them that things like this happen. That there are people out there that are going to take advantage of them yeah. if they let them, and and to, to kind of ingrain in their head a, a set of values and a set of rules. You know, we talk about the alcohol. Uh, one of the biggest things we educate people on, especially during spring break down here, is don't ever leave your drink alone. You know, don't uh, have somebody watching it, take it with you. Yeah, if, if you happen to someone could slip the date rape drug in there. There's right, another thing absolutely. to worry about. Let's get David in on this. David, I just think it just seems like it's become a recipe for disaster here. Young kids, not all of drinking age, and, and the way it's been marketed. It's let it flow, you know, it's not spring break unless something, you know, you do something stupid. I mean, and uh, we got the hormones, the alcohol, drugs in this case. Um, 
it, it just, to me anyway, seems worse than ever. You're, you've seen it firsthand. What are you seeing? Well, it, you know, in some ways it's uh, a contradiction because obviously the city of Daytona wants uh, to have as many tourists and, you know, spring breakers as possible come visit the city. But at the same time, the hotels and other establishments in the city are perpetuating, uh, as you say, an atmosphere of, you know, free-for-all, uh, alcohol, you know, giving away shots on the veranda, holding um, uh, contests, you know, uh, so-called booty contests and, and what have you. And, and, you know, that's all creating an atmosphere which can be very dangerous. Yeah. I mean, look at the victims here. Of the six we know of, four of the six underage, youngest victim, 14. Five of the six involved either drugs or alcohol. Uh, David, I'll ask you, on the, uh, let, let's talk about underage drinking. And just, I mean, how many of these kids here are indeed kids? And even under uh, 21? Well, there must be some percentage that are being served, underage children are being served illegally because clearly, um, you know, the, the, one of the first six victims was 14. Uh, I spoke to Susie Williams, who's a program manager at a uh, rescue, rape rescue crisis center in Daytona, and she said that it's typical year after year that they will have victims between the ages of 12 and 16. Wow. Why? That's frightening to hear that. Uh, Wendy Walsh, Stupid parents. What, what is, is that the mindset of the kids going here? The mindset of the parents. Hey, it's time to cut loose into uh, dangerous proportions? 12 of course to 14. It is. And unfortunately, while we'd like to think, Mike, that we've got this utopian world where young girls, adolescents, teens, young adults, young women will always be protected, the truth is both parties play a role in this. If a girl is going to walk down the street in a G-string carrying a beer, what is she asking for? And this isn't really blame the victim night. This is really just Dr. Walsh saying we need to teach our girls how to be safe and how to protect themselves because predators are out there and even people with just sort of slightly loose boundaries, you add drugs or alcohol to their body and they become a predator. So you put yourself in that kind of environment, it can be very, very dangerous. Three of those girls were unconscious when they were assaulted, which mm -hmm. makes me think about the date rape drug. Yes, okay, we're gonna take a quick break. Wanna hear from you on this one. If you're a parent out there, you feel good about letting your child go to spring break, call in one eight seven seven. tell HLN's the number. You gotta look at these pictures, parents. But I don't understand how come children at 12 years old, 14, 16, are on spring break. I mean, where are the parents? Very disturbing. 